Hello, everyone. Welcome. Uh, wherever you're at, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. I see we've got some uh, some viewers from Italy. Um, where else are you all from? I come to you from Hawaii, so it's still my morning time. But uh, welcome. Welcome to this Cospaces EDU live demo. I'm so excited to have you guys with me today. Um, and I'm going to show off some uh, some new stuff uh, that's come to Cospaces recently. Um, keep in mind, uh, this, this um, video will be recorded. It'll be available after uh, the broadcast today. So um, I'll, be, I'll be posting it through uh, my social media accounts. Uh, it'll be on YouTube. I'll share it in the Cospaces EDU uh, Facebook community as well as on Twitter. But uh, if you're watching live, say hi in the chat. Uh, introduce yourself. I'd love to know where, who you are, where you're coming from, um, and maybe uh, share how you're using CoSpaces. I'm always curious uh, how how other teachers, how other people around the world are using CoSpaces in different ways in their classrooms. But uh, let me get started, and uh, we'll uh, we'll get going here. So, um, oops, let me just there we go. So let me uh, introduce myself. My name is Michael Fercano the second. I'm a, I'm a CoSpaces EDU guru ambassador. I've been using CoSpaces EDU since, uh, well, since before it was an EDU product. Um, when it was fresh fresh on the market as just CoSpaces, I jumped on board. I saw it as an amazing tool, and I, I've been using it ever since. So uh, since then, many years ago, I've, I've done a lot of things with CoSpaces, created a lot of uh, resources for myself and for others. Uh, but by day, I'm a K6 design and technology teacher. I teach at a, at a K-12 private school here in Hawaii. Um, but uh, on the side, I, I love using CoSpaces among many other tools. And so uh, some some things that I've been able to create along the way, I've, I've created a, um, a couple of different lesson plans. I've created some CoBlox tutorials as, uh, as I've explored, as well as taught my students how to use um, CoBlox. I've created some resources along the way. Uh, most recently, I've also um, created a, a full... Uh, three project curriculum guide for teachers through the Games for Change organization. Um, that's I'll, I'll, I'll show a little bit more about that in a second. But also, uh, you might recognize me uh, from the Facebook group. I, I help moderate. I share lots of CoSpace goodies on the group. I always um, we share posts from the CoSpaces team. But uh, you might might see me on the the Facebook group from time to time. Um, but getting back to some of the resources, uh, just to share a couple of things that are out there for all of you to access on your own. One thing that I've created recently is the a curriculum guide for Games for Change. Games for Change is a great organization that runs a student competition every year that offers scholarship prizes, challenging students to create amazing games with different tools. And uh, starting this past year, CoSpaces EDU has become one of those tools that students can use for the Games for Change Challenge. And um, in order to help them and their teachers prepare for the Games for Change Challenge, I created a CoSpaces EDU curriculum guide. Um, and it's uh, completely free to access, it's free to use. You, you don't have to participate in Games for Change to use it. Um, I, I designed it as a way for teachers to uh, very easily introduce CoSpaces to students. I've even seen some teachers just give the guide to their students and let them kind of uh, take off with it on their own. That, that's worked out really well for uh, many teachers that have trained through, ga through Games for Change. Uh, but uh, if you're interested in uh, this curriculum guide, uh, the bit.ly is here, and um, I'll share it out later on as well. But if you also just Google Games for Change CoSpaces, it's very easy to find. And it, it's a PDF that you can download, print, and access on your own. So check that out. So today, uh, during this live broadcast, I want to hit three things. Uh, I want to introduce some of the major updates that were just released this month by the CoSpaces team. So we'll take a look at some of the other updates aside from the uh, the quiz feature that we'll, that we'll focus mainly on today. I want to share one really cool tip from two of our amazing CoSpace ambassadors. I call this the CoSpacer tip. And then we're going to dive right into the, uh, the new quiz feature. Uh, I want to show you... Um, what it looks like, how it works, how a teacher can create a quiz, and then we'll uh, also jump into the student perspective, and you'll see what it look, looks like for a student to uh, to complete a CoSpaces quiz, and then uh, after that, what does a teacher have access to? 
uh, after students take their quiz. I'll, sh I'll show you some of those, some of the things that teachers have access to as well. So we'll, we'll take a look at both perspectives as we dive into this new feature. Um, so let's, uh, let's get into uh, some of the, uh, the other major updates that have released uh, this past April. Um, before I move on too, I just wanna mention, if you guys have any questions uh, along the way, feel free to put them in the chat. I'm trying to monitor that as I go. And a little later, if we have time, we'll do a little Q&A. If I don't get to them during the live broadcast, I'll try to answer them afterwards as well. But feel free to toss any, any CoSpaces ED related questions you have, any comments, any thoughts or, um, or ideas that you might have around CoSpaces. I love to hear from users and ambassadors out there. So feel free to use that chat as we uh, continue moving forward today. Let's take a look at some of the CoSpaces uh, April updates. So um, aside from the quiz feature, uh, one big change coming to CoSpaces is uh, the student's free play. So typically a student account has a free play um, dashboard where they can kind of freely create their own CoSpaces. That's moving. Um, and it's moving into class playgrounds. So every class that a teacher creates will have its own playground that students can create freely in aside from the class assignments. Um, and uh, that just allows a teacher to have better management and better control over what their students are creating in CoSpaces. Now keep in mind with this update, uh, if a student is removed from a class, they will no longer have access to those co-spaces that reside in that class's playground. And if a student is not part of any classes, they will not have access to a playground, right? So it's important for students to be connected to a teacher and to be a part of a co-spaces class. Uh, so this, uh, there is a deadline. I think when, when you log in, um, there is um, uh, like a message across the top of your co-spaces dashboard that um, warns you of this, that reminds you of this, and you do have to make the switch. So you have to click a button uh, moving your free play projects into your class playgrounds, and there's a process for that. So the deadline for that is June 30, uh, 30th, uh, coming this summer, 2023. So um, that warning will continue to be there at the top of, of teacher and student screens um, up through June. And just uh, keep in mind or make sure that students make that switch and understand what that means for your students and your users. If you guys have any questions about that, toss it in the chat. Um, another big update uh, that just, was just released this April is uh, affects uh, CoSpaces published to the gallery. So um, when um, a teacher publishes a CoSpace to the gallery, it will automatically have remixing turned on. And um, I don't believe that's something you can turn off. So basically any co-space you put in the gallery, anybody will be allowed to remix it, which means they're able to make a copy of it. Okay? If you keep a co-space un... Um, what is it? Uh, like if you, I think I forget what the name of the other option is. But if, it, if you choose to share a co-space not to the gallery, but just make it available through you know the co-spaces link or the QR code, then you can turn on and off the ability to remix. But again, any co-space you publish to the gallery will um, automatically allow remixing, okay? So keep that in mind for uh, gallery sharing, remixing will be on for those co-spaces, which is great. I mean, I, I always encourage, when I put things in the gallery, I always turn on remixing. I feel like you know sharing is important. I want other people to, to experience the co-space, but I want them also to I want to help them better understand how I or my students created it and give them an opportunity to see sort of behind the scenes, behind the curtains, um, how that co-space was designed and created, especially with co-blocks, right? Everyone's always curious about how somebody how somebody programs something in co-space. And so remixing allows that, that user, that viewer, to be able to kind of peek behind the scenes and, and get a better idea of how that co-space was created. So remixing is a really important feature for me, and I always try to make sure that it's turned on. Hey guys, thanks for saying hi in the chat. We got someone from Nashville. Welcome, welcome. We're just talking about uh, new April updates. Uh, something else that was released in April, a new language has been added to CoSpaces. That is the Polish language. Um, so I uh, wanted to quickly show you that. Let me switch. Woo, woo, woo. I just realized you guys can't see my big screen. There we go. So uh, 
in your CoSpaces settings, you have the ability to change your language here. And there are many languages that have been added over time. But uh, Polish or Polski uh, is the newest uh, language that has been added. So that's pretty awesome. It's always great to see a new language added to, um, to CoSpaces for all of our all the users across the world. And another big change, especially with um, the uh, free play moving to playground class playgrounds, um, if you're a teacher and you also act as a student in another teacher's class, you will have two workspaces. You'll have a teacher workspace and a student workspace. So I've kind of set my teacher account up just to kind of give you an idea of what this looks like. So this is my teacher account. I'm a CoSpaces teacher. It shows you up here. And, uh, but I'm also um, a student in another teacher's class. So when I look at my, my um, sort of profile up here, uh, you'll see, if I can zoom in here, how oh, does it make it bigger? Um, you'll see uh, that I can switch between a teacher workspace and a student workspace. So there's better, better organization, better, better management, um, specifically for teachers that might, might serve both roles for whatever reason. So if I switch over to my, my student workspace, you'll see that it's changed up here. And it shows you my gallery and my classes. And this is the class that my teacher account is a student in. And if I jump in there, I can see that uh, I have my own class playground and my own and assignments, although no assignments have been posted yet. Excuse me. And then I can always switch back to my teacher workspace. Okay, so um, just keep that in mind for you teachers out there that also uh, serve as students. Uh, and it's kind of backtracking. You see there's this yellow bar across the top. This is uh, that warning and that notice about uh, free play changing to workspaces and playgrounds. Um, and you can always click the button to learn more. I've already done the switch, so I don't uh, have to go through that process anymore. So it's a one-time thing. All right. So um, those are some of the other major updates that have come to CoSpaces this month in April. Uh, if you have any questions about them, again, toss them in the chat. Share them through the Facebook group. Um, we've got a great community willing to help out and answer any questions you guys have. But uh, next, I want to take a, a quick quick look at a, at a tip, a great tip from uh, two of our amazing CoSpaces ambassadors recently uh, shared in the Facebook group. Um, and it's uh, it's a great uh, it's a great combination of AI, which is really big right now. I'm sure all of you are aware AI or artificial intelligence, but taking AI and combining it with CoSpaces in a in a great creative way. So. Um, what it is, is it's uh, an, an, op uh, an ability, an opportunity to create really amazing 360 degree images using artificial intelligence, right? So basically it's using a tool to give a prompt of, a, of an image, of a scene that you want to create, and then the tool will generate that as a 360 degree image, which you can then download um, and then upload into CoSpaces to use as a background or a backdrop for a CoSpace scene. And um, what we what you do is you use this website called BlockadeLabs.com. And uh, I can kind of jump in here and see BlockadeLabs.com. So um, Blockade Labs, I don't believe, I don't think you have to sign in. It's kind of just an open open tool right now but the website the main site looks like this and what you want to do is try us try the skybox lab and um, here we go so it kind of presents you like a 360 image as an example but basically you you dream up your world you give it a prompt and then you can choose like sort of the style and they're, they're always like changing these and upping these there's also some that they're testing so you can create like a sci-fi style, a realistic, uh, an anime art style, um, oil paint. I mean, there's re really cool sort of uh, styles that you can apply to your idea. And then it'll, it'll create, it'll generate it as best it can. And then you can download it. You can download it as a 360 uh, image and then upload it into CoSpace. So I could try something like, um, how about like Mushroom Kingdom. And I'll try it as a. Mm, let's try realistic. I guess depending on how 
detailed you are, how specific you are, it might take a little longer to process. Let's see what it comes up with. It's doing something. There's a little green bar that kind of draws across the, the screen here. Show me how long it's taking. And it's coming. There we go. Ooh, that's cool. <laughs> Very Mario-esque. So this is a my Mushroom Kingdom 360. Isn't that neat? And then I can download this to my computer. And then I can go into CoSpaces, create a new CoSpace. Yeah, I'll just do this, 360 image. And then I'll upload it. Let's see. Oh, wait. Change the environment. Choose my realistic mushroom kingdom. Let's see what happens. Ah, I see some of you have used I've used that well. Yeah, that's great. Oh, you have your students using it. That's really cool. Yeah, I mean, I'm curious. Uh, I definitely want to try this out with my students when we use CoSpaces next and see what kind of uh, creative backdrops they can look at that. So it just pulls it right in there as a 360 image. It's a kind of a unique center point there. Puts me on a road. So just really, really great way to uh, create quick um, but uh, detailed 360 backdrops and again that's called blockadelabs.com so i want to give a huge shout out to um our italy ambassador elisabetta i think i hope i'm saying that right uh you can find her online there at her hashtag and then our amazing uh canada ambassador uh mary eve there they both were sharing um examples of how they were using uh blockade labs in their in their projects and just uh, sharing the idea i thought it was a really great way of combining ai um, and co-spaces to create some really unique uh, backdrop backdrops based on you know our students own creativity so give that a, a try when you have a chance blockadelabs.com thanks to our amazing italy and canada uh, co-space ambassadors and um, just to uh, give you a heads up there's um if you're interested in learning more about ai i'm going to be uh, i'm also going to be sharing a little bit more about blockade uh, and using AI with CoSpaces at this uh, Teacher Goals Week of AI event happening in the middle of May. Um, registration link is coming soon. It'll be completely free and open to everybody. I think everything's being recorded too. So if you can't make it in, uh, you know, live, uh, the, you'll, you'll have access to all the recordings. So um, keep an eye out for that. I'll be sharing it definitely in the CoSpaces Facebook group. Um, the hashtag is Week of AI. Got some amazing presenters and sponsors. Um, but I'll be talking more about that that Blockade Labs uh, AI tool with CoSpaces at this uh, at this event. So give that a put that in your calendar. Write that down and just uh, stay tuned for more information. All right, guys. So let's uh, let's dive in now to the new quizzes uh, co-spaces demo. Um, keep in mind, though, this is a brand new feature, right? And it's it's uh, uh, still in beta, right? Beta meaning that it's subject to change. Um, the tool could change. Things can be taken away. Things can be added. Um, I think it just depends on how well we use it. What kind of feedback the co-spaces team gets? Um, it works pretty well as it is. Um, I've already shared some feedback with the team, so there, there are some adjustments could definitely be made, and I think the tool is just going to get better as more of us use it in different ways. Um, but feedback is extremely important here too. But just keep in mind that it is a beta feature, meaning uh, things could change at any moment. Um, but let's take a look at the quiz, uh, the new quiz co-space feature as it is uh, today, as it, re as it was released this month. So I'm going to just jump right in here. Now, if you guys have any questions, if you want to like, you know, see something again or see something specific with the quiz feature, um, let me know in the chat. I'm going to just kind of go step by step, kind of show you first what it looks like to create one, what options are available, um, how one can be built, and then we'll uh, we'll test it out from a student perspective, and then. Um, we uh, will see what the teacher can get at, at the end of, of, uh, of a quiz being used in a class assignment. Okay, so um, currently, uh, as a teacher, students can't create quizzes right now. Only a teacher can. So 
in a teacher account, when you create a new co-space, there is now a quiz option here. And um, there's only one scene to choose from. So I'll start a quiz scene. Now again, as I mentioned a minute ago, it is a beta feature. So this, uh, when you create a new quiz or when you take a quiz, you'll get this beta feature notice. You can turn it off though if you don't wanna keep seeing it over and over again. Um, I'm gonna leave mine on for now, just as a reminder. But let's jump in and see what it looks like. So here we go. So this is uh, the quiz creation screen for the teacher. Now, um, keep in mind too, in its current state, it, the quiz feature doesn't utilize virtual reality. It doesn't utilize augmented reality. Um, it's a very basic, simple creation tool for creating a quiz using the CoSpaces platform, right? And uh, I think the, the idea here is creating a simple formative assessment for students and delivering it through CoSpaces um, classroom assignment uh, management tool. Um, I, I, I kind of like the idea of like just keeping it all within one app, right? Typically, you know, we you might use CoSpaces for this and you deliver quizzes in that tool and students and teachers are having to juggle all these different tools for all these different purposes. So, you know, having a like a formative quiz option in CoSpaces kind of makes it, uh, you know, useful and handy. Students don't have to learn something new. Um, but here we go. So uh, in um, the quiz tool, we uh, every quiz question is considered a slide over here in the left. So I'm, I start with one slide and I can duplicate it. I can add another slide, which gives me some question slide options. So there's multiple choice. There's a true false. Students can type an answer like an open ended response. Um, there's also a matching tool. And then you can also just give them an information slide. So if you just want to give information, not necessarily have them respond or answer something, uh, there's also an info slide. Um, this is what we have so far in terms of the types of slides. Do you guys have any ideas for other kinds of slides that could be built into CoSpaces? Um, let me know in the chat. I'm, I'm curious what, what things might be missing or what other things could be added. You know, what I, I think somebody mentioned early on is maybe building in the ability to build a uh, like a VR, like a virtual co-space in here so that you could like kind of present information in a, an engaging and creative way and then ask them some questions, right? So I thought that was kind of a cool idea, being able to build in a, 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 your typical co-space um, within a, uh, um, a quiz uh, co-space as well. Um, but this is a this is a multiple choice. So you type your question, and I've kind of got like I've got an example question here. So I'm pretending I'm a fourth grade science teacher. Uh, my students are learning about animal cells, so I'm going to give them a a quick quiz on the parts of an animal cell. So I've got a question here: What is the name of the protective layer that surrounds an animal cell? And I've got my uh, four options here: so the mitochondria, the nucleus the cell membrane and the cytoplasm. Anybody know what the actual answer is before I give it the answer? So you give it the question. There's an option to add more text in here. So you could like share more information, maybe give them hints or tips. Um, and then you plug in your, your four answer choices and then um, you check the box for the correct answer, right? So the system needs to know what the answer is in order to check students' work afterwards. But uh, for this question, the answer is the cell membrane. So that is the answer to the, the correct answer to the question. Now over on the right side here, you have some edit slide options. So we could always change um, the, the type of question being asked from a multiple choice to a true or false, to a typed answer, to a matching tool. I'll show you those in a little bit. And then you can change the question style. So mine is a text only based question. So it's just text, right? Just words. But you can also add um, a text and image. So you could give them a picture of something related to the question. I kind of like this idea because one really powerful feature in CoSpaces is the ability to, is the, the built in uh, web search, right? To be able to search for images directly in CoSpaces. 
I almost forgot about this when I was testing this out at first. I was like, oh, it'd be really cool to put some pictures of the plant cell or the animal cell and the parts in there. So I was like trying to juggle one window looking for pictures and saving them onto my computer and then uploading them to spaces. And then I quickly remembered, oh wait, there's a there's a built-in image search that that um, saves me a lot of time, right? So I could come in here and say, uh, let's say, animal cell. And I can find an, a nice animal cell picture. Or maybe I have my own. I could always upload my own picture, but I could find a cool one here and uh, drag that up now what, what what you have to do here is we want to drag and drop the image right so you drag it up drop it in the image box let that load and voila now once you use it once you drag it up it will save it to your CoSpace image library so you can always reuse that in other questions if you need that way you're not searching for the same picture over and over again it saves it you can always, you know, rename it, um, and then, um, and then use it uh, multiple times if you need to. So I got a cool picture of a cell, of an animal cell there. Um, and then uh, you can change the answer style, right? So answer style can be text answers like I have here, or you could do image answers. So rather than giving them text, you could give them f uh, pictures for the answer, and then they could choose the correct picture. Um, that might be a, a great uh, way to visually represent parts of an animal cell rather than giving them the words give them a picture and see if they can figure out what that part is and then choose the correct um, part of the animal cell so you could change it to animal uh, image answers and then you can also give a background so you can change right now my background is a default like dark purple but I could uh, you know I could change it to like a green um, there's you can use that you have the full rainbow of colors here that you can choose from and then you can also uh, drag and drop an image into the background so I was using for an example that I'll show you a little later I was using Bing's AI image creator to create some fancy background graphics of like microscopic cells or you know like things like that and I was using it as backgrounds for my my quiz questions but you can drag and drop an image in there so I could find something like um, animal cells I don't know, let's see microscopic what do I get oh, what's kind of cool so maybe like like this one let's see what happens drag that in and wait for it there we go there we go so there's like a picture of microscopic animal cells in the background of my quiz question here and again that gets saved so I can always use that I can repeat it I can reuse that in other questions as well what's well, kind of what kind of curious about it, it's kind of kind of misleading is like there's a there's a little image here of what appears to be a 360 picture but you can't it, it doesn't it doesn't serve it. You could upload a 360 image, but it's like that stretched, weird out, weird version of it. So it's not truly using 360 images. So just just keep in mind that it's just a flat two dimensional picture um, currently. Okay. Okay. So uh, I can go on and add another one. So there's like the true false. So asking a question, choosing true or false. Uh, let's see. Let's change it to a typed answer. So here I can give them a question and they type their answer into the box, right? Open-ended question. I think at, as an end result, the teacher would have to determine whether these types of questions are, are right or wrong. The system won't grade it automatically. Um, so keep that in mind. That's, that's typical of tools like this that have open-ended question, open-ended answers um, that the, the teacher will have to grade those types of questions uh, later on. There's a matching tool. This is kind of cool. So you can drag in um, pictures, um, and then they, I think they have to like rearrange and match up the two pictures across from each other. So match them up correctly. It'll like mix them up. Let's see, prompt style is text image. Oh, there we go. So that, oh, I see. So that was, oops, uh, text. So these are text bay. These are text boxes. So I could put like a 
um, a, a part of an animal cell here and then like a, a definition of that part here and they have to match them up that'd be cool or I could do a image so I could put like a an image of the the animal cell part and then put the name of it and see if they can connect the name to the the, the picture and so some really uh, really great uses of like practice like recalling information um, practicing uh, like learning parts of things matching things up um, so again, you can change those options here cha change the background again so this is the uh, the the matching tool okay and then uh, let's see type a slide and then there is the info slide so this is just a you can give it a title and then you can put a bunch of information in here and if you say type change the layout okay so here's a uh, different layouts for the info slide so right now I'm using just all text boxes but there is an option to like have a title a picture and a text box or just a title and a picture um, so those are the three options for that right so I could like toss in that animal cell quiz sorry got a bug flying around. and I could put in uh, some information here you can always rearrange slides as you create so maybe I want this to be first give my students information then have them take the quiz maybe you review and then they can take the quiz here change the background as well and let's see, I think that's pretty much the gist of the quiz feature. Do you guys have any questions or maybe I, I skip something? There's, there's a lot to this. So if I skipped anything, let me know in the chat if you want to take a look at something, take a closer look at something here. Um, but that's, that's the basics of creating a quiz, right? So you set it up with your different types of questions. And then, um, and then you're ready to go. So if I want to test this as the teacher, I can press play. And this is what it'll look like when somebody is taking the quiz. So here is the info panel or the info slide. And then I can go and it's, it gives me like a list of the slides over here that I can see, like a directory. I can go next. And then here's the, for the multiple choice question. I could select it. It doesn't tell me if I'm right or wrong right away, uh, but you'll see that a little later. Uh, and then I can move on to the next one. And this one uh, didn't really, I didn't finish this one, but you can, so you can kind of drag the blocks around. And then if you're on the last question, you can finish. You can, uh, you can always go back to previous slides and like change your answer if you want to. And then when you're finished, it'll review with you so it will go over the questions and their correct answers with you when you're done currently i don't there's no way to to not review with with the the, the student that's taking the quiz it, it just does it automatically but it'll show you green check means i got it right uh, red x will mean i got it wrong we'll dive a little bit more into that when i show you a a true example here in a moment but that's, uh, yeah, so from the teacher perspective, I can press play and kind of test it out myself and then jump back into edit mode and make changes if I, if I need to. Okay, so uh, once a quiz is created, um, then you'll want to assign it. So the only way for students to take a quiz in CoSpaces is for the teacher to assign it, uh, attach it to a, a CoSpaces assignment, and then students are able to um, take the quiz right so I have for as a, as a completed example a science plant cells quiz here and I'll show you what I did with this one this one's just a multiple choice but I kind of used a variety of multiple types so, um, uh, so there's just five multiple choice questions asking different things about a plant cell um, this one utilizes the image uh, as the answer style right so question picture and then four pictures that they have to choose from which organelle is a plant cell responsible for photosynthesis and then this one is just a simple 
multiple choice with text. Um, this is where I use the, the Bing AI image creator to create like a fancy creative background here. And then I'm reusing different versions of it. So I got five questions here, five multiple choice that I've designed. And now um, in order to give it to my students, I need to assign it as, uh, as an assignment, right? So if I have a class here, here's my practice quiz class, um, I can create, oh no, I'm sorry, let me go back. I need to start from here. So if I have a quiz created, I can use it as an assignment here And then uh, can choose the class that I want it to go to, give it a title, give some instructions, take the quiz. Good luck. Oops. And continue. Okay, so I'll give it a moment to process here. There we go. So, um, excuse me. I've assigned the quiz that I created as a co space assignment. And now I'm in the assignment. So you'll notice here that all the students that are in my class, I can see their quiz. Okay, And uh, you'll notice at the top, there's some options for downloading an overview and downloading student reports. Okay, But uh, I've already done this once. I'll go back to my first assignment. So here in this CoSpace assignment, I've assigned the same quiz already. Uh, four of my students have finished it. As you can see noted here, finished. One of them has not worked on it yet. So I'm going to, uh, is this gonna work? Let's see. Okay, let me uh, set this up really quick. So I'm going to uh, log in to this student and we'll see if I can show you guys. Uh, what it looks like from a student's perspective. Let's see, can I switch screens? Give me a moment here while I try to uh, switch screens here for you guys. You know what I'll do is um, I will, I can do this. I'm gonna log out, log in as my student. So that. Okay, so here I am, yeah, that'll work. Okay, here I am um, in my student account. So this is one of my students. They have, uh, they're in the practice quiz class and they have um, two quiz assignments, but we'll do this first one here, plant cell quiz. Now, even for students, it'll give them that beta feature warning, so they'll see it too, currently, because it's still in beta. Let's jump in. Okay, so here's the, uh, the instruction box. We'll close that. And here I am with the quiz. So um, you'll notice, maybe it's, it's because I'm a little zoomed in on my screen, but the images are kind of hiding down below. I don't know if that, can I make this smaller? Let's see. No, it's not letting me. What is that? Oh, that went to full screen mode. Let's exit out of there. Okay, but anyways, um, now I can uh, take the quiz. So here, which organelle in a plant cell is responsible for photosynthesis? I believe it's this guy here. Uh, what is the function of a cell wall? I'll say to store nutrients in the cell. Responsible for storing and transporting materials. How about the endoplasmic reticulum? What is the function of the vacuole? Mm, produce energy, maybe? And what is the function of the mitochondria? Mm, to produce energy. So I'm going to finish. Uh, yeah, Mona, there is a pro I'm going to share with you um, a trial pro code at the end of today. It'll be at the end of the video, as well as a discount code if you're interested in purchasing CoSpaces later. So stay tuned for that. I'll, I definitely have that for you. Um, but here, so as a student, I finished the quiz. Uh, as When I click finish, 
um, it shows me my results. Now I can't, um, I can't go back and change the answers, but it is showing me which ones I got right and which ones I got wrong. So this one I got wrong because it has a red check. Green checks mean I got them right. So I can't retake the quiz in, in this moment, but I can see my results. Okay, so uh, the student's done. They exit out. If I go back in, it uh, again will not let me retake the quiz. So it's like a one-time deal. Okay, as an assignment, the student takes the quiz once, and that's it. The results are recorded for the teacher to see. Student can see the results, but they can't retake the quiz currently. If I wanted them to take the quiz again, I'd have to create a new assignment to give them another opportunity to take the quiz, which might which might be a great opportunity to show growth, to show understanding once there's a review. Okay, so student's done. I'm gonna go back into my teacher account. And we'll take a look at the results. Okay, so let me go back into that class assignment. And I see that all five of my students have finished the report. And let's take a look at these. Let's see what I can download here. See if I can show it to you. Let me get this one. Save. Okay, so once you're done currently, you can download reports as PDFs. The student reports, I think, comes in a zip file. Um, yeah, and then I can unzip them. Uh, and then the class overview comes as one PDF. Let's see if I can show that to you guys. Yeah, there we go. So here is the class overview report. So you get it as a PDF, which you can download, print, do what you want with. Um, and uh, it shows you, excuse me, um, the, the name of the quiz when it was created and the status. So it shows me here um, an, a quick overview that there are zero unfinished quizzes five of them finished and there's a total of five students okay so we're good there and then class performance it gives me each question gives me how many students answer that question correctly and how many answered it incorrectly so really quick glance at like where are my students falling short what what part of the study of the plant cell are my students struggling with the most and typically like i could see uh what is the function of the vacuole in a plant cell all five of my students got it wrong. So that's something as a teacher, I think I need to go back and review with my students. They're not understanding the function of a vacuole, okay? Um, and everything else is kind of even here, or these, these three questions. So maybe that's something I could pull a small group and see uh, and, and review with them. So I get a quick overview of how many are correct and how many got it wrong. And then it gives me a breakdown of individual students. So. Student five got three correct and one and two wrong, and then so on, right? So I could see from an individual standpoint which students struggled and which students um, excelled, right? So like student three down here got one correct and got four wrong. So I might need to pull that student aside and do some review or create a small group and review, right? So really great uh, quick, uh, you know, quick glance of, of feedback here of my, my class performance. Okay, and this one, depending on the number of students, this one just turned into a, a two-page PDF. And then let's see if I can show you um, the, can I show you guys, is this gonna work? Uh, let me see if I can show you guys the, the student overview. Let's see if I can change this. Yeah, it's not letting me change. Um, yeah, I'll have to share that with you guys a little later. But the uh, the student overview it just gives you it gives you um, just a breakdown of the student and which which question specifically that student got right and wrong. So it gives you a, like a further breakdown of individual student progress. Okay. So um, again, the uh, the teacher get some, some pretty valuable data depending on the type of quiz uh, you create. Um, you, can, you can download a class overview, you can get a, a zipped folder of student reports, so each student gets their own report. And then, um, oh, 
I just noticed this. Uh, something I didn't check earlier. I can. I, I stand corrected. I think I said that you'd have to give them a new assignment for them to take the quiz again. But um, I can tell a student to start over, right? So I could say, who was that? Student three got most of them wrong. I'm going to tell them to start over and reset the code space. There we go. So it clears it. And then um, they can take it again. Now, let's see. I'm curious if starting over means that we lose their initial data. Let's take a look. Yeah, so it looks like clear, uh, starting a student over in a quiz does clear their initial data. It doesn't save it. So you see here I've got one unfinished quiz now and student three did not finish. So it doesn't doesn't look like it saves um, their previous score. So again, you know, that that might starting over might be useful. Maybe they, you know, they weren't paying attention to the instructions or were confused and you could start over. But if you want to keep that data, then you might want to assign the quiz again separately. In order for in order for you to get new data it does let me also download an individual students report let's see if I can see that rather than downloading the whole class so here is yeah okay here we go here is an individual students report this is what we see so we see that they finished we see uh, incorrect answers and correct answers so I can see at an individual level where they're excelling, what they understood, and what they're still struggling with. Okay, so that's an individual report for a student. All right. You guys have any questions about the quiz feature? Any thoughts, any ideas? I'm just I'm curious where your, your minds are at, what ideas you might have. Have you tried this out yet? Are you considering giving it a try? What do you guys think? So that is, uh, that's, that's the new quiz feature. So that's its current state. Again, it's in beta. See, it's marked as, as, a, as a beta co-space. And um, there we go. So, you know, if you guys try out the new quiz feature and uh, you come across something that you think doesn't work well or maybe needs to be changed or maybe there's missing something excuse me um share, share your feedback share it wherever you're most comfortable with put it you know share it on social you can tag co-spaces hashtag um hashtag co-spaces edu um you could share it on the co-spaces forum the official forum share it in the facebook group um you know, share. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm all, I'm on all those social networks. I'm, uh, any feedback I've come across, I share it directly with the team. So they're always looking to see, uh, and hear from from users about the new features they uh, they create and add. And the more feedback they get, the better. Um, yeah. Okay. So, um, let's go back here. And uh, before we wrap things up, again, if you guys have any questions, toss it in the chat right now. We have a little bit of extra time. I'm happy to do a little Q&A. But uh, as Mona was asking earlier, is there a pro code? Yes, I have a pro code. Um, so on the left side of the uh, the screen here is a trial code for CoSpaces EDU Pro. The code is COSMICHAELFR. That gets you 30 days of CoSpaces EDU Pro for free for you uh, and 99 students, so 100 seats total, for 30 days, a whole month uh, of um, trying out CoSpaces Pro, which also gives you access to the Merge Cube add-on, as well as these new features that have been released. So if you, ha if, you're not, if you haven't purchased CoSpaces yet, if you're still testing it out, trying to see if it's something worth adding to your, your classroom, uh, give the, uh, the Pro Trial a code. You can use the code once, I believe, um, 30 days is a good chunk of time to get through at least one project with your students uh, and see if it's something that they like and uh, that, that you like. And then if you are interested in purchasing CoSpaces at, at any point, on the right side is um, a purchase, a, a discount code. You'll get 15% off the purchase of 
uh, the first, I think the initial purchase of your annual license, if you use the discount code on the right side in yellow there. Um, and uh, I get no, I get no kickbacks from the discount code. I don't, I don't get a percentage back. It's, uh, I love the tool. I love sharing about it. And it's just kind of my way as an ambassador, as, as um, uh, helping teachers uh, find use in CoSpaces Edu. So again, uh, trial code on the left, discount code on the right. Uh, I don't have a professional account. Is it possible to code? Yeah, uh, yeah. So if you create a new CoSpaces account and set it up as a teacher account. Um, you can use the uh, the pro trial the tr uh, trial code for pro. So um, just set set up your CoSpaces account as a teacher account, and you can use you can use that code to get yourself pro access. Okay. Um, and if you if you if you're having issues with that, feel free to reach out. I'm more than happy to help. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for watching today. I appreciate it. Giving up some of your time. Any other questions? Feel free to toss them in the chat. We'll kind of just hang out here for a few minutes. Let me know. It doesn't have to be related to the new quiz feature. If you guys have any CoSpaces questions in general, happy to assist. I can demo something else. I can, you can jump back into CoSpaces if you want to learn how to do something. I'm always uh, I'm always eager to, to help out, show you guys how CoSpaces works. Maybe while um, while we're sitting here at the end, oops, I'm gonna jump back to the games for change here. Hey, Elisabetta, thank you, thank you. All right, G four C and C. Done. So I'll just search for it. Games for Change Co Spaces. We'll get you to the Games for Change Resource Hub. And if you scroll down here, you'll find the Co Spaces curriculum, and there's a link here to get it as a PDF. So I mentioned this at the beginning of the broadcast today, um, a CoSpaces EDU game design guide for Games for Change. Um, so this again, this is free to use, free to free to download. You don't have to participate in the Games for Change challenge. You could just use this as a teaching guide. Um, I've designed it as a great way to introduce game design and programming with CoSpaces. So uh, it breaks down you know what is CoSpaces breaks down the editor by by its different parts talks a little bit about the uh, what what is CoBlox um, zoom in a little bit there we go um, kind of breaks down the CoBlox programming workspace here the different parts different options available gives them names shares a little bit about how to use CoBlox and then it gets into projects. So in the guide, there are three projects that teach students how to build in CoSpaces and program in CoSpaces. So project one is one of my favorites to get students started. It's the All About Me Merge Cube. So it teaches them how to build um, the Merge Cube. And then what you know introduces the co blocks they'll be using for this project. And then it breaks the project down by phase. So it's, you know, one phase at a time. So this teacher how to set up and access the assignment, um, how to choose a character. Where's my thing? And so again, step by step, what to do every step of the way, breaking down with screenshots and descriptions, and then uh, eventually. Sorry if I'm scrolling too fast. Where is the next one? There we go. Then the next one, project two, is a VR roller coaster. So how to create a virtual roller coaster experience. Uh, along with it, they're creating like sort of a scavenger hunt along with their roller coaster. So again, breaking it down step by step. Let's see if I can skip ahead here. Okay, decorate the scene. 
and then project oh there I skipped it project three is one of my favorites I'm actually doing this project now with my fourth graders is creating a floor is lava game sometimes also referred to as a parkour game uh, like an obstacle course but they learn how to create a floor is lava game programming so this is this is very much um, very much connected to game design here this particular one because they learn how to uh, create a lives counter a visual display of lives how to subtract lives when certain things happen in the game um, and it you know utilizes variables introduces them to the idea of variables to count lives and display that variable um, and again if you have no idea how to do these things this guide breaks it down step by step you know so and there's lots of some examples here of uh, floors lava slash parkour games that you can introduce to students to get some ideas um, and then in the end students are challenged as part of the uh, games for change to build their own impact game and then it kind of breaks down what that means what that looks like but uh, three three really great projects to help get uh, teachers and students started and as I mentioned at the beginning of the broadcast when I talked about this I've seen some teachers just print out the curriculum guide and give it to their students and just say here follow follow the uh, the project you know phases step by step and see if you could uh, create your own version of this game and it's worked out well for them so it doesn't necessarily need too much teacher guidance and knowledge on the teacher's end with the programming aspect of things students uh, pick up on this tool really quick Oh, that's great. You're writing a new guide for Italian teachers. That's awesome. I love to see, yeah, I love to see uh, resources, you know, created or, um, you know, made available for other countries and other languages. I really love that. That's great. Thanks for doing that. Let me go back to that pro trial code there on the left and that discount code. And I think that's going to do it, everybody. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you for taking time to watch. Um, really appreciate your time, your dedication to growing as educators. Uh, this uh, will be. It, this has been recorded. It will be available afterwards. I'll share it out for those of you that missed the live broadcast. And uh, stay tuned for more of these. I hope to do more of these as uh, new things come out for Co-Spaces. But have... Um, a great rest of your day, everyone. Uh, have a great rest of your week, and I'll see you online. Take care, everyone.